Hello friends, Ken McCall, the Jazz Vinyl Lover here, back one more time. We've got 4,000 people over here for sale. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, Ken McAuliffe here, back in New York City from the Jazz Vinyl Lover headquarters, deep in the heart of Greenwich Village, where if you play your music too loud, all your neighbors get really upset. I have a neighbor downstairs who walks around with headphones on 24-7. Like I can be coming up from the lobby and she's wearing headphones. Oh my God. Anyway, um, we have a great store here uh, in the area called Princeton Record Exchange. If you haven't heard of it, it's in Princeton, New Jersey. It's one, probably one of the best record stores on the East Coast when they get in a new shipment of records. Um, and if you sign up on their mailing list, uh, when they get in a new hall of rock or jazz or whatever, they'll send you a video. And they'll, and they'll be you know, flipping through a couple boxes of their new releases, their new arrivals. Um, they recently got in, and they still have, a 1,000-strong copy jazz LP collection. And um, they put the video up night before last. I'm sure people headed out there, headed to the store before it closed. I got there yesterday morning. I slept four hours and got there when they opened at 10 o'clock, took the train out from New York City to Princeton. And um, there wasn't anybody there, which was kind of shocking. So I had carte blanche. Uh, by the time I got there, the heavy hitters they put in the video were gone. Um, they had, you know, first pressings of Miles on Prestige, uh, Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, a lot of records in the two to $400 range. I wasn't really interested in those anyway. I have a few of those. But I was really curious to see what they had in the collection. I was told by one of the uh, workers that um, the collection belonged to an elderly couple in the area who were just thinning out their collection. And uh, I just picked up an assortment of stuff. I sp actually spent more money than I've ever spent in one time that wasn't a credit card haul. Um, but it was worth it. These are great titles uh, you don't see very often. Definitely not in good shape like this first pressing of Lester Young on Savoy. Um, Lester Young, one of the great tenor saxophone style stylist, best friends with Billie Holiday. I believe they learned a lot from each other. She definitely sang some of his lines. He is a very ethereal sort of, he's cool. You know, he's not part of the cool school, but one of the great early tenor saxophonists, along with Coleman Hawkins and a few others in that period. Coleman Hawkins before anyone, obviously. But um, just a great, you know, Savoy with Rudy Van Gelder records. Um, great lineup, Lester Young, Count Basie, Freddie Green, Junior Mance, Jesse Drake, Roy Elliott, Leroy Jackson, Charlie Shavers. Hank D'Amico, the uh, classic red Savoy label. But let me just run through these and I'll say a few things about each record as, as it comes up. Um, and they had like, this record was five bucks, Lee Konitz with Marshall Salal, Jack DeJanette, and Dave Holland and Dick Katz, a great pianist who passed too young. Um, I mean, I don't see this, very, this record very often in the wild in New York City at all. Just a good straight, you know, Lee Konitz is his own thing. Is he cool? I don't know. Um, he's definitely not hard bop. He's cerebral, sort of intellectual, but he wrote great tunes on Milestone. Dick Katz's label. Six bucks. So they had all sort of prices. I paid 50 bucks for this first pressing, Mose Allison Local Color. On the Fireworks label, as it's called. Deep Groove, Rudy Van Gelder, yada, yada, yada. I love Mose Allison. All his output sounds sort of the same. Um, and he made a lot of records for Prestige, Atlantic. I think his final days were on Blue Note, perhaps. But just, you know, really funny stuff. Uh, sort of a run, running commentary with a piano trio. Very blues-based, but very original. Uh, ben Sidron follows in the footsteps of Mose Allison, even though he's nowhere as good. But, you know, you should check him out. Check him out on YouTube. Uh, very funny, wry lyrics. Uh, great piano jazz. Um, I was really happy to see this. Sweets Edison on Clef. Uh, Harry Edison, and his orchestra, uh, Verve, Clef, even RCA in the late 50s, early 60s, were doing a lot of records with, you know, jazz was still very popular in the early 60s. The swing beat was very popular. You heard swing beat on television all the time, and all the big bands that accompanied the, the, the you know, the variety shows from Ed Sullivan to Johnny Carson, to Joey Bishop, you know, to all that, you know, the late night entertainment back then all featured big bands and they all came out of the swing era. And so they were sort of, Verve and these labels were packaging, you know, the soloist from Basie and Ellington's band to make, you know, the music is great jazz, but there's no doubt the packaging, as I'll show you more in a little bit, was aimed at white suburbanites. Um, you know, you had so many records with black musicians with white folks on the album cover. Perhaps the most best well-known one is Miles Davis, Miles Ahead, where there's a a woman and her young child on a sailboat out sailing, you know, off the North Shore or something. And, uh, you know, it's, it's gross. And I think Miles got pissed and um, they pulled it and just had a picture of him playing trumpet. 
But you know, they were uh, early 60s, forget about it. Um, you know, Fear of a Black Planet goes back to the 1860s, but in the 1960s was obviously cooking. But uh, Sweets Edison, one of the great trumpet players, I actually haven't put, put this on yet, but it's, you know, beautifully produced, uh, beautifully played, probably big band jazz. One of the classics on Verve, Soulville with Ben Webster. This is just this is a must-have for any record collector in the jazz. Um, and it's interesting they put his big mug on the face. Maybe he was already sort of a star when this came out, I guess, in the late to mid-50s, mid to late-50s. But this is a great record. You know, Ben Webster, the epitome of a soulful swing behind the beat, grooving, luscious tenor sound. Um, almost sort of the opposite, Bob Brookmar, the great uh, trombonist, who went on to write for many, many big bands, including, the, I believe, the Village Vanguard Orchestra, and just one of the great trombonists, one of the great arrangers and composers. And I had never seen this, bef this record before on Verve. The blues, hot and cold. Um, you know, they call this the, the trumpeter label. You can see the trumpeter there on the label. Um, I'm trying to we'll just get the back of it. Well, there's really not this much to see. But a great band, Bob Brookmeyer. Jimmy Rolls, Mel Lewis, and Buddy Clark. I mean, that is a Mel Lewis from Thad Jones, Mel Lewis Big Band. Uh, you can't go wrong with anything with Mel Lewis in the rhythm section. Mel Lewis is the epitome of swing, but he's light on his feet. He's kind of a tap dancer. Never played complicated stuff. Even the rare time he, Mel Lewis played a solo, it's just really subtle. You know, he's really sophisticated. He's all about keeping time. But when a band needs to cook, he can make it cook. This is a good example of what I was talking about. Let's put the, uh, the great Harry Edison way in the background and put the white woman up front with her pearls and a little cigarette. I don't know if you can see that. Let me take it out of the sleeve. I haven't listened to this record yet. I've never seen this record before, before I saw it yesterday. Gee, baby, ain't I good to you? Um, once again, the lineup. Harry Edison, Ben Webster tenor, Oscar Peterson piano, Barney Kessel guitar, Rob Brown bass, oh, Ray Brown bass, Alvin Stoller drums. I mean, the greatest players in jazz of that period. Still amazing stylist in jazz. But, you know, Let's keep the black guy way in the back. We don't want him anywhere near our white women. Um, but, you know, it looks like sophistication. This is probably sophisticated jazz. You know, you have this, these guys who could play anything, you know, and they, they want to work, so they, they let the, the labels do whatever they need to do. Um, the swinging count, the great count Basie, I think the forgotten count Basie, um, made so many records, and so many of them are just great. Uh, the records on Roulette, on Emus, and on, is this Verb? This is a Verb. Some of his most popular records are on Verb. Another record I've never seen before, Jam Sessions at Commodore. Uh, Commodore is a really early label. I haven't played this yet, but isn't that a wild, freaky cover? A later record on Milestone, Heavy Gatefold, Lee Konitz, again with Dick Katz and Jack DeJohnette. Well worth searching out. Jim Hall, Joe Henderson, Andy Gomez, Ray Nance, Carl Berger, Dick Katz, Elvin Jones. Yes, Lee Connors. Um, they had this for $11.99, Paul Blay Standards. I'd never seen this before. Paul Blay with uh, Billy Higgins. No, Billy Hart. That's why I bought it. And Jesper Lund Lundgren on bass. Um, Steeplechase is a great label. I think they're based in Sweden or Norway. I'm not sure which. But almost anything you buy on Steeplechase is really great. The last few Chet Baker records on Steeplechase, I think, are some of his best records, period. There's three of them. And the recording is great. I think Jimmy Rainey's a guitar. The sound is just stellar. I actually think Chet Baker was better as an old man than he was as a young gun. I don't know this label, but check this out. Oscar Pettifer and Red Mitchell. I don't know what this is. Is it just two basses on this record? I don't know yet. I haven't played it. But it sure looks cool. Jazz mainstream. Let me look on the back. Oh, it's different groups. Oscar Pettifer's group, Red Mitchell's group. It's mostly Red Mitchell, but anyway, that's a cool record, and I think I paid 12 bucks for that. The average price of these records, as rare as they were, was 12 bucks, except this one, which I paid 120 bucks for. Um, the, the, the jacket doesn't look that great, really. It's kind of beat up. Uh, Lee Conitz, Tristano, Marsh, and Bauer, and you can tell it's an original. Just look at that pressing, I mean, the printing. Um, but the record is in beautiful shape. See the fireworks label there. You can see my messy apartment behind that. But uh, that's one I was going to spring for. Um, they had a couple of Gil Evans Orchestra records on World Pacific. 12 bucks. I mean, a 
we sell as a jazz record center, this is a $50 record. So I really advise you to get on the Princeton Record Exchange uh, mailing list so you know when they get these, these great collections in, if you live in the Northeast. Um, another great Savoy record. No, this is Bethlehem. Milt Hinton, haven't listened to this yet. I think I've only seen this. I've never heard it. Milt Hinton, one of the great early bass players in jazz, also one of the great photographers in jazz, who put out many photography books. Uh, an $8 record, Jerry Hemingway, a great free jazz or abstract or intellectual avant-garde drummer who I really love because I was a drummer. He did a lot of solo drumming records. And they are really, really cool. Um, 12 bucks. Uh, Tete Montelou, 10 bucks. Is this another steeplechase record? No, it's Enja. A great piano player. A really beautiful touch. Um, I don't know where he's from. Is he South African? Is he Italian? I'm sure someone is out there and will correct me as to what this is. But when I see a record by Tete Mantulu, I buy it because he's a great pianist. Again, very subtle, very, very creative. Another great pianist out of New York was also a great composer, Cedar Walton. This is a, a solo piano record for six bucks. If we sell us a jazz record center, it's 12 bucks. When Princeton Record Exchange gets in uh, great records, the prices are, are always great. Uh, one of the great Winton Kelly records, he only made about four or five, I think, on VJ. I think I paid 24 bucks for this. I've never seen this one before. Stan meets Getz. Stan meets Chet. This is really filthy, and I cleaned up the record. I use, uh, you know, scented wipes with no scent uh, to clean the, the sleeves. And they can get off a lot of gunk and not take off the uh, color and the shine. And sometimes I'll use lighter fluid to take off stickers or to remove ugly tape residue on the side. It evaporates. Works great. Um, I think this one costs $12.99 because the cover is not in great shape. You know, what a great record. Um, here's another one. The cover was really beat. I'd never heard of this record before or seen it. Interpretations by the Stan Getz Quartet on Norgran. Clef, Norgran, I believe they all came, became part of Verve. And uh, Stan Getz is primarily known for his bossa nova Getz Gerberto, but he was a wonderful tenor player before that and after that. Huge, big sound, beautiful sound, beautiful tone. Anything by Stan Getz is great, really. Um, this is a, you know, they're, they're playing in a tiki hut, I think. Anyway, tiki music, very popular. Another one of those uh, unusual records, Roy Eldritch and his orchestra, Oscar Peterson, Joe Jones. I've never seen this before. I paid 20 bucks for this. And it's in great shape. Clef. I don't want to take too much time up here. Uh, Alcone and his orchestra. This is another $50 record that I paid $14 for at Princeton Record Exchange. The great Alcone. Um, here's a Red Garland record I paid $10 for. These are weird records because some of these will say from Prestige, this album has been electronically remastered for stereo. You put, their, put them on and they're not. Even if the thing says stereo, they're mono. So look out for that because that is a dreaded term in collecting records. This album has been electronically remastered for stereo. It's generally the kiss of death, right up there with Dynaflex. Um, and then finally, almost finally, 12 bucks. Jimmy Jufri, tra Traveling Light, with uh, the great Jim Hall and the great Bob Bookmeyer. Like hanging out in somebody's apartment. This is a beautiful, subtle, progressive record in a way. Jimmy Jufri was really uh, hip. Just like Bob Brookmar was. And this was an original Atlantic pressing. It's got a hole through it. 12 bucks. And finally, I'm a sucker for these sort of... Uh, these records made in the 70s, almost always out in L.A. Direct disc, spectrum, direct flight. You know, it's uh, they're great, great recordings. They go straight to cutting the lacquer. I believe they bypass the tape and go straight to cutting the lacquer. So you get these very dynamic, immediate recordings. And... um. When I see them, I grab them. Some people think they're cheesy. Who cares? Uh, limited edition. Let's see if I can. There's all the guys in the band. And you know, the top of the crop of 70s LA. This might even be early 80s. So anyway, Ken McAuliffe, Jazz Vinyl Lover. Thanks for checking out my page. Thanks for checking out my videos. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Please come back. Have a great day. Bye.